Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm set up trying a new platform this time. Uh, we're going to see if this works a little bit better. Um, I'm in a different room. I'm in the same room as my router. Hopefully this works out better. Um, and I'm going to have the, the phone horizontal. So this way it'll be easier to fill the screen a lot better. You'll be able to see a little bit better. So, um, Let's get the, the camera situated and we'll get started. All right. Okay, so here we go. All right, I think this is going to work. So this way, having the phone sideways, I'll have room for the, the palette. Maybe that'll make it a little easier to see what I'm doing also. Um, apologize for my voice. I had my kids this evening and uh, played a lot, talked a lot, and feel like I'm losing my voice. I do that quite a bit. So I'm just getting things set up here. Okay. I did a little bit of work today when, uh, when I was at my lunch break um, at work. I, I went and added a little bit, but then I was afraid I was going too far. And I really wanted to do this stream tonight, so I backed off so that there would be something um so let's let's go to it um some of the shapes i filled in earlier today this block this block um some of these small little pieces there um had a little bit around the face punched up a, a little bit in the background not too much so I wanted to have have a little bit to work with tonight. So I think uh, we should definitely be able to finish this up. So I'm going to start. I'm actually going to punch this area up here. So I'm going to get a little bit of purple. Dab it a little off of the, the brush so it doesn't go on too strong. So please give me your thoughts on on the setup now if this works a little bit better for you I think it looks a little bit better on screen um, because I have it on my laptop right now I can see what everybody else sees a slight delay on it This shape here, I'm going to go, I want, I want this to be a little darker. So I'm going to do some dark green here. Again, like I said last night, I like to build up some of these shapes. Occasionally I'll go on heavy. Other times I'll build it up. So right off the bat, I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank everybody for being able to um, thank everybody who who watched this yesterday. Um, kind of put you through hoops watching two different streams because of the problems I had with my connection. Um, so I want to thank you for watching it. Uh, anybody who commented, I had a lot of support. A lot of encouragement yesterday um, as I was doing it a lot of great comments I'd like to thank you all for that I'd like to uh, 
I'd like to thank the podcast Heroes by the Pint. Um, one of the reasons I'm doing this, this painting on a live streaming platform is because they held a drink and draw last weekend. And it's one of the first times I, I tried doing one of these paintings out and about. I've done them in conventions, not too often, and nobody's really paid any attention as I work on them. Uh, a few people here and there might might watch, but that was one of the, the first times that people really seemed to be interested in the process. So that kind of led to me doing this live stream this week. Um, and then they shared my post informing people I was going to be moving to YouTube tonight to do this. So I really appreciate that share. And, and Ollie is sold. Um, Matthew Ellis from Heroes by the Pint has already purchased it. So thank you, Matthew. I really appreciate the support. So right now, I apologize. I'm, I'm kind of bouncing around on this. Um, I need to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Um, like this shape right here I'm working on now, I'm building up some of the contrast. There wasn't really a whole lot of value contrast in this area. Um, so while the colors were different, they held a similar value and Things don't pop when they're holding the same value. It doesn't matter really what the colors are. The human eye really detects value more so than chroma. So I'm just punching that up a little bit. I think right here, I'll go with a little bit, a little bit of green there. Because I don't want that to just get lost in shadow. Just building up the color one on top of the other. Sometimes if I have a, a too much of a puddle of a color, I'll try and dry off the, the tip as much as I can and just kind of pull it back up. Um, let it, the, the bristles draw the paint back in and then just dab it onto the paper towel. That's what I was doing there. It was just a little bit too heavy. I'll let that dry a little bit and then I'll go back into it. Um, right now, I like having this light green here. I don't really want to have a lot of contrast there because this is really the, the core shadow, which that'll be built up more. So I think this is one of those cases where I'm gonna, I'm gonna put light colors next to each other. Sometimes I do that just because people will wonder why, why do you do that? It's not like that elsewhere, other places. So I'll do that just because. And I can build that up and still have some value contrast. So it's getting a little pale right there. I'm gonna put some yellow in there. So now with the yellow, I've got the value contrast, but I also have some chromatic contrast. And I like what that does. So 
So there are really no wrong answers as far as what color I put where because let's say this color right here, if I, if I went with the blue, it wouldn't look weird. I don't think it would be wrong. I went with a dark green, just personal preference on that shape. But it's such a small, trivial shape that I think when somebody looks at this, if it was blue, I don't think they would say that that shouldn't be blue. It kind of falls in with the whole thing all together. Now, if I went with pink, if I didn't have pink anywhere else, and I decided to put a little snippet of pink, that would stand out. Um, but, you know, I think it would work in this case because I've got some light purple here. I've got some light purple blending into a... It's kind of a pink right there. So it would actually... That would work. So forget everything I just said. I'm just touching this edge up. That was really bothering me. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more brown up here. I think I'm going to apply some black under the hood so that it'll look like there's some overlap. So between the painting and myself, I have a mount holding the phone and a cord, a power cord plugged into the phone. So I'm kind of looking through these, 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 uh, like spaghetti, thick spaghetti strand type objects. It's really weird. I need to work on my setup, especially if I'm going to do this more often. Let me know if you want me to do more of these videos. I plan to, um, but if, if they're really bad, if nobody likes them, then I'll just avoid the hassle. But if you're really liking them, if, you, if, if you're enjoying the videos, let me know and I'll keep making them. Okay, some of these shapes, like this here, this, 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 those are all very similar to this one, where I don't really put a whole lot of thought into the colors that I put there. Um, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble, but those are so trivial that I really don't do it. Or at least I'm not consciously doing it. I might be unaware of it. And again, these small shapes, I don't blend a whole lot. I'm not going to mix a bunch of different colors in there because, frankly, you're not even going to see it unless you look really, really close. Um, even when I blow it up, it's still it's still pretty small. I put that black on way too heavy. So I'm just going to clean my brush and go in with just plain water. I'm just going to drag that out, try and get some coverage. that there, ladies and gentlemen, is an accident. It happens. So I just cover it up. And 
This I'm going to do a dark green and then I'm going to go over it with a dark blue. Not that blue. This blue. Sorry for the shaky camera, I just bumped it with my chin. <laughs> Low tech. Yeah, I like that blue. That's a good blue. I think I'll carry this blue a little further. I haven't used this blue on this yet, but I like it, so I'm gonna incorporate it throughout. I try to avoid using using a particular shade of a, of a color only one time. I really try to avoid that. I don't want to have one isolated color that isn't carried out somewhere else in the painting. It just, it's like an off note. Um, they're really, it needs to relate to the other colors. And if it's isolated to one shape, it's just gonna look odd. Go a little bit light here. So since I put the reference photo away after I drew this, I don't really know what that was originally. I think it was a gauntlet. So if I have a dark green here, dark green there, light, here and now we've got the light blue here and light blue. It really pushes that that shape of, of that. May, I guess maybe it is a gauntlet. Um, if not, I've made it into a gauntlet. I'm so far behind on that show. I have not watched it in a while. I need to. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Just ran out of time. And if I'm watching a lot of TV, then I'm not creating as much art as I really should be. So, nature of the beast. There, I like that. Do the same over here. I like the dark green. So when I finish this up, the next painting I have, uh, you might have gotten a sneak peek of it, yesterday when I did the first video um, I'm gonna do a Supergirl I haven't done a Supergirl painting yet so that is gonna be my next one um, but I don't work on these every day because I've got to get my books done so tomorrow night instead of working on a, a painting I'm gonna I'm gonna try and work on some Frank pages. Um, at some point I'd like to do a, a, a live video 
YouTube seems to be working. Um, maybe it's in the, just coming into this room. Maybe the platform is just working better. But uh, what I'd like to do is find a page, maybe even just a panel in Frank issue three that I'm working on and maybe maybe stream it um, I'll show you what I have going on in my my brain what I'm thinking of when I lay out these pages um, so that is a possibility maybe I'll do that tomorrow um, if not tomorrow it's definitely on the horizon And I'm going to do some more TV demos. I know my kids like watching the TV demos, so. How am I doing, everybody? Is this working? So these, these shells, I could do those in different colors, but I think I could make them confusing because they're so similar in shape. The spacing is, is similar, not that one, but these two, these two, the shape of that is similar. I think if I went with different colors, it would just, it would be confusing. It wouldn't really tell the story of what they are so I'm going to keep it consistent. I'm just going to do the same color on all of the shells. There we go. Wow, he's flying. Now his beard um, his beard, I'm not going to necessarily go with the colors that, that they are in the comic, obviously, because that would be boring. Um, but I'm going to just kind of bounce around some colors. I know it violates what I said about the, about the bullets, but I don't know that I think it would just look really interesting with almost a scale of colors. Yeah, I think that's cool. What do y'all think? I'm just adding blue for the shadows on the face and the lips. No shape for the jaw. And we'll do it right here for the bottom of the jaw. There 
go. He's almost done. Actually, I have a lot of these shapes almost filled, but doesn't necessarily mean I'm done with it. I'm gonna punch up some of these values might blend a little bit more color here and there. But the whole time, being very mindful that I don't overdo it. Because an overworked watercolor painting just looks, looks kind of rough. So when I work on all these small shapes and then move into a big shape, it's just, it's kind of like being confined, being trapped, and then you escape. Being able to move your arms after holding them in for an extended period of time, it's liberating. Just realized my palette was was moving out of the frame. <laughs> Sorry about that. I start working on these and I don't really pay attention to what I'm doing outside of the painting. So when I work, I tend to daydream a lot. Um, so that's how I push the palette away and don't really realize I'm doing it because I'm, my mind's usually many, many different places. Um, so if you see me at a con and I'm working and I don't acknowledge you, if you come up to my table and I don't acknowledge you right away, I'm not trying to ignore you. It's just my mind is elsewhere. So I think this is one of those instances where I'm going to try and create a little bit of form. It helps maintain the organic look. A lot of the shapes with some of the blends can look mechanical. Um, I've had people ask if I do these digitally and uh, nope. Yeah, I can get a, an organic look if I do it digitally, but it just, no, I don't feel like it.
I guess if I did this in Illustrator, I could blow these up and make them billboards. That could be cool. I don't know if you can hear it on the on the on the YouTube video, but I have a clock ticking right behind my head. The tick tock, tick tock. It's like Peter Pan. I rarely work out here. I don't want that one. I think I'll do a blue. And I think this is actually his hand down here. And I'm still probably would be wearing a glove, but I really want that flesh tone to be carried out somewhere else just so it can relate. Um, I mean, I could put flesh there, but then he looks like he's got a, a rip in his outfit and that'd just be weird. I'm getting rid of that. That didn't work. I'll let that dry and I'll go in with maybe some yellow just to punch that up. Again, everybody, that was a mistake. But it's a recoverable mistake. And again, that's down far enough on the painting that people probably won't even notice. But, but I'll fix it. Okay, so now I've got this bow. Um, the bow I want to do, I want to do a dark purple because I've kind of established purple as, as the shadow. So throughout the entire painting, the shadows are depicted with the, with the purple hue. So that part of the bow is going to be in shadow. So it stands to reason that that's going to be purple too. So while a lot of it might appear random, um, the small shapes are a little bit more random, but there is a process. There is a, a thought going into the bulk of the colors that are used and where they're used, how they're used. Um, it's not all random. Very little of it is random. Sorry if the camera moved. I bumped it with my nose that time. <laughs> that string, I'm going to go with the, well, that lighter blue. I'm moving the palette so I have room for my hand.
There we go. I'm going to build this up down here. I got to do the arrows. I'm just contemplating what colors I want to use. I'll use that. Adding this this down here now. It's it's dry. There, better. Now I have this really nice, vibrant, reddish brown. I want to put that right here. But I'm going to pull that down. Because I only want that tip up there to be that, that brown. So I'm going to go with a dark brown and just kind of meet it in the middle. There we go. I kind of have this green coming up. That was kind of cool. So I'm going to extend that. So if you look at the arrows, um, I, I didn't draw the arrows out precisely because it wouldn't match the rest of the design. So the arrows just kind of imply the edges of the far ones. And then inside, I just improvised. If I drew each arrow individually, I think it would look monotonous and boring. So that's why I drew the arrows the way I did. Again, there's a reason why the the elements are drawn the way they are. And this is also a, a great opportunity for me to to carry some of the colors that I've had throughout the painting, bring them up here, and it just kind of ties everything together. So I don't want that one. So I'm going to put some purple in there too. Right here. Because again, it just it ties it all together. I'm 
in this outer shape. Look at the dark green. Because I think it needs some type of weight, it needs some darker value. Giant mosquito just flew by. Yeah, that works. Push this up, make it a little darker. And then having the background blend, why don't I blend, but have it, having the background visible through the, through the arrows almost makes it look like, like a, like a lens flare almost. You know, that, that light's coming through, it's so bright it's coming through that you can't see the edges. Um, not sure if it reads that way or if that's just me making it up, but that's how I look at it also in that instance. Um, I. I've got two shapes left. I could wing it, but I want to take a little bit more care into these shapes. I don't want to. It's easy just to randomly grab a color to finish it off, but sometimes I put more thought into the last shapes than any of the other ones. Okay, take a look. Maybe we'll punch this up a little bit. So, just coating with a lot of water. Moving the palette so I have room for my big hand. And just drop the paint. Let the texture of the paper and the water just do what it wants to do. Okay. One last thing I want to do here. I don't want that one. I want that one there. I also don't want to put my hand in the wet paint. That's a bad idea. Put my hand in the paint and then I carry that dark reddish brown and it ruined the whole thing. There we go. Okay, let's take the tape off and see how it looks. Very carefully. So it might look like paper coming off onto the tape, 
but I actually had this taped onto a piece of paper earlier. And when I put it on the board, I ripped it off and some of the paper residue stayed on the tape. So it's actually not from the board. The board's pretty clean. Nothing has come off of, of the drawing board, the, the Bristol board that the actual art is on. So when I used to do these, I didn't really mask off the edges. I would just measure out the image, use a roller, draw my square, just kind of brush the paint outside of the, the marks. But it looks sloppy and I don't want them to look sloppy anymore. So I started putting tape down so that my edges are nice and clean. This looks better. Okay, there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I guess that's it. Um, let me do one last thing. Okay, I need a signature. We survived it. We survived the first YouTube live stream. So I think this worked out well. Let's switch it here. Just one moment. There. We survived it. Um, thanks for going on this little journey with me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, you know, you know what to do. Like it subscribe it, uh, subscribe to it, uh, make comments, uh, tell me ways you think I should improve. Hey, here's the, the bar that I was bumping the whole time. Um, yeah, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. If you have ideas on ways that I can improve it. Um, it's very low tech. So there, there are a lot of ways I can improve this. Um, but I'm gonna, I'll learn as I do it. Um, if you have suggestions on, on characters you would like to see me paint, then please comment. Let me know what you think. Um, but for now, I'm going to say good night and Matthew, your painting is done. Uh, I hope you like it. So I'll see you around. Bye.